name is uh, Marie Louise, and I work at the Utrecht University Library. And actually, uh, Pauline is, uh, and Bianca are my colleagues. Um, and um, while they are more focused on the open access part, uh, I uh, try to advise uh, everyone at UMCU about uh, research data management. Uh, and I will give this presentation together with uh, Nico. Uh, and Nico is uh, working for the DIT. Uh, and he's basically uh, working on data technology to make your life easier at the UMCU uh, when uh, trying to make your data fair. Um, and today we'll discuss a little bit um, about what we are doing uh, to promote open science and to make it easier for you to publish your data in a fair and uh, uh, in a fair way in your software as well. And uh, to do so, the first step is always to ask you guys what you need. So at the moment, as we're uh, at this point in time, uh, there is a survey that should be in your email inbox about the needs uh, you may have to uh, publish your data. Uh, and the deadline is tomorrow. So uh, uh, you still have time to fill it in uh, after this presentation, of course. Uh, but we will use this information to uh, work on our uh, guidelines and uh, and how to reach out to you, uh, how to make your data fair. Um, next to that, there's also many trainings. Uh, one of the trainings is for new uh, researchers, or if you feel new in the field of uh, research data management, uh, there's one on June 17, and we still have places left. So I would like to tell you all of you, uh, please sign up for that. There are many more uh, trainings also at the UU, but we'll discuss them. Uh, later. Um, so if we're talking about open science, uh, at the open science program at the UU, uh, there are many uh, points. For example, we just talked about open access, uh, and but there's also uh, the public engagement, which has been mentioned before, and fair data and software to move to the future uh, for science for a better world, uh, the world of open science. Um, and fair data and software is a big part of that. Uh, so, um, therefore, we'd like to remind you to take care of your data to make it fair. And what does that mean? Uh, if you didn't know yet, uh, fair means that uh, you make it findable, so everyone can actually find your data set uh, or, your sub or your scripts. Uh, if they find it, that they know how to access it. Uh, and then if they are able to access it, that they can actually uh, use it with any uh, program, so uh, thinking about file formats. Uh, and then as soon as they are open, uh, able to open it, they should be, know if they can reuse it uh, based on uh, licenses, but also um, based on, for example, a lab journal that has been attached to it or other documents that tell them how the data has been uh, retrieved. Um, and I would like to focus on the first part, findability, and then Nika will continue with the rest of them. So how to make your data findable. Well, the first step is to publish your data in a data repository. And there are many data repositories um, to put your data on the World Wide Web. Uh, there's even an, uh, a registry of research data repository, r3data.org, if you're looking for a specific uh, data repository. And you may have heard of uh, Figshare or Dryad or Zenodo to publish your data, uh, which are more general data repositories. And these general, general data repositories, uh, what they have in common is that they uh, provide you with a persistent identifier, just like with your publications. Um, if you have a persistent identifier, if someone clicks on that, they will always go to the same place and they can find your data there. Um, at the UU, uh, and also for research from the UMCU, uh, there's a possibility to also use the data repository data versionnel. And the nice thing about data versionnel is that it doesn't only have a persistent identifier, uh, but if you uh, use, for example, and I think Nico has to click for me one more time, uh, Google, uh, and one more time, <laughs> yeah, if you use, for example, Google or Google Data Search, uh, then, or you use uh, Mendeley Data, or you use Dimensions, that you will find data your data. So it is very findable. So in all different varieties of places where people would actually look for data, they're able to find your data on data version now. Uh, and uh, if you go to the next one, you see an example in data version now of a very fair data set. 
So this is the next slide. Uh, this is uh, from a, a colleague of mine from the proactive cohort study. Uh, and you see uh, that with a data set, you uh, can uh, provide it with a description. You can add keywords, just like with your publications, uh, subject terms. Um, and just like if you're looking for a television on the on Google and you want to buy your television, you Google television and you Google maybe that you want to have it uh, HD or you want a certain uh, size of your screen. Um, data within, for example, bold.com guides you to the, re the, the right place. Uh, if uh, uh, the, the data with a certain television set doesn't mention uh, that it has 4K, then you won't, wouldn't find it with your search. So you need that data, and that is what we call metadata. Um, and the metadata from Dataverse is very uh, easy to fill in, and it's also very good so that people are able to find your data set. Um, and then there's also the possibility to add the terms. And especially if we're talking about uh, sensitive data sets, uh, which at UMCU you have, so you have personal sensitive data, then uh, it is uh, good, uh, the best if you have really nice metadata because the real data set, uh, you cannot just put on the World Wide Web. Uh, there's no uh, GDPR wouldn't allow you to put just all the data on there. So you just need to publish the metadata. And the nice thing about data version L is that the metadata is really good. So people are able to find it. And you can also add the terms of access so that they have to sign a DTA, for example. It can all be done. Uh, at this moment, uh, data version L for the UMCU is uh, um, done by the UU RDM support. You have to reach out to me or my colleagues from RDM support to upload your data on data version L. But later this year, you can contact, just can contact your data manager because uh, what is being worked on is a way uh, where you archive your data set and then you can easily upload it to data version L. Uh, and it will come to you very soon, but it's a work in progress. Uh, so uh, soon you'll just have to contact your data manager how to publish your data in data version now. If you have scripts, then preferably it's in R or Python. And I think Nico will tell you a little bit more about that because that has to do with the interoperability of your code. Uh, but if you have code, uh, best shared on, on with a uh, something that gives you a Git. So you can have a talk about GitHub or GitLab uh, because it keeps track of your version control. So you work on code, you save it on your uh, GitHub, then someone else can take your code and work on it and it's saved as well, but all the different versions are in there. So people can go to the code or reuse your code very easily. And uh, I think Sander and Nico are both working on guidelines for uh, licenses, so how people can when people can reuse your uh, script and code, uh, and also other guidelines on how to fill in your GitHub. So it's also something that is in the pipeline, uh, how to uh, upload your scripts, etc., on GitHub. We are telling you to upload your data, upload your uh, scripts, and then also you have all your preprints and all your uh, publications uh, as a real open science guru you are. Um, so it's all scattered in different places and you can uh, interlink between them and that will increase your visibility. Yeah? So if you interlink uh, your data set on data version L in your GitHub, uh, if someone is going to Google uh, you, then it will g end up higher in the hierarchy of Google. Um, but another thing to help you is an ORCID ID. And uh, what it does, it ensures you that all your research output is correctly attributed to you. So people can see in one overview everything that you've been doing. And it only takes two minutes to create. Uh, and, and it is something that will go to with you throughout your research career. So if you, um, of course, you're never going to use the leave the UMCU Utrecht, but if you have to, and you're moving to another institution with your, during your research career, you can take your ORCID with you, but people can still see what you've been doing uh, and what you are going to do in the future. Um, so go to ORCID.org to do that. And then I think from now onwards, I will give the floor to Nico for the rest of the.
Thanks, Marie-Louise. Uh, we'll go to the, the second letter of the FAIR acronym, accessibility. Um, as Marie-Louise has explained, the first step is uh, how do my colleagues find my data? Then if they have found it, can they access it? Now, we give two examples of uh, places where you can uh, publish your data, data personnel. Another one uh, that is very important for genomics research is the European Genome Archive, but there are many more possibilities. But um, both of these platforms have a possibility for fellow researchers to request access. They cannot just push a download button. They have to ask you nicely, so they push a button. An email goes to you or to your data manager, and then um, behind the scenes, um, people look at the request of, do we know this person? Do we think it is also in our interest to share the data? And if so, uh, the requester is granted the permission to download uh, what he or she has asked for. And again, data personnel makes this very easy. Uh, hopefully, we'll uh, have a contract with uh, Dance for Data Personnel in a few weeks or a few months. And then everybody from the UMC Utrecht can uh, use this uh, by just contacting their uh, local data manager. Um, when, we, when you talk about data personnel, uh, you usually talk about the results of finished research or uh, say well, or one piece of research, one uh, piece of research that you have published. Another um, way of looking at accessibility is um, you have data from ongoing research and you want to analyze this with people outside the Institute. Now, since we are using a lot of uh, uh, sensitive data, you cannot just put it on Dropbox or Google Drive. I mean, there are some laws that forbid that. The UMC Utrecht has, together with uh, the UMCs from uh, Nijmegen and Rotterdam, developed something called the Digital Research Environment. That is a very secure environment in which you can place sensitive data and analyze it together with people from outside the UMC Utrecht. This has become available quite recently and we're promoting it, uh, but this is also a way for especially for people from outside the UMC Utrecht to get access to data you are also working on. So keep that in mind, the DRE, the digital research environment. The next step in the, in the, in the FAIR program is interoperability. Um, and that has to do with the nature of the uh, files that you share on some platform. Um, and some data formats are more open than others. Um, uh, the, the, the not so open formats or closed formats are often called proprietary. They are tied into a piece of software for which you have to pay money. Uh, take, for example, SPSS. Uh, the UMC Utrecht pays a license fee for uh, SPSS. And if you use SPSS, I know it's popular uh, in our institute, but if you, if you share um, an SPSS data file or a syntax file, you assume that the recipient also has SPSS, and that might not be the case. And especially since you see a lot of people now doing their calculations with R and Python, um, the use of standard formats, open formats, becomes more important because uh, Python and R uh, are really terrific tools, uh, but especially with uh, open data formats. Um, so I think that the, the more and more you see um, R and Python becoming more popular, the, 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 the need to use uh, standard formats also becomes more important. Now, um, we are also working um, since uh, November last year on implementing uh, an archive, an internal archiving system for research at the UMC Utrecht. It's called Archive Medica. And one of the things that the Archive Medica software does is that if you offer it a bunch of files uh, and it contains files in a proprietary format, in a closed format, it converts it automatically to something that is durable and open. It does it automatically. It doesn't throw away the original. It keeps the original, but it also keeps the, 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 the copy. And uh, that makes it easier to have um, uh, open formats available in the long term. It also does lots of other things, um, extracting metadata. And this also helps um, later on in uh, 
making uh, data, older data, easier to find, both within the Institute, but also outside. And the last part of uh, the FAIR program is reusability. Uh, so um, a fellow researcher has uh, followed all the steps. Uh, he or she has found your data or software, uh, has gotten access to it, uh, has also confirmed that it is interoperable. It is an, a, 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 a format of file that can be opened by the software the recipient has. Um, but um, can you really reuse it? And that, that has a lot to do with documentation. And uh, not just documentation, but also, um, well, not just documentation of the whole process, but also uh, if you look at a, a data set, um, what does each column mean? Uh, can you uh, explain uh, in, a, in a readable or machine readable way uh, what a particular column means? That means that you also assign metadata to variables or columns. Um, since uh, two years, we are now promoting Castor as the standard data capture tool at the UMC Utrecht. And uh, Castor makes it easier to build data dictionaries in which you describe um, what each variable means. Uh, units, uh, you name it. And Castor also makes it easier to use standard forms so that you have better reusability um, across studies. Uh, as I said, and uh, Marie-Louise also said, documentation is crucial. Um, we have uh, uh, in, in the lab environments, in the, we have uh, already the, the, uh, the tradition of using uh, lab journals. Um, a very popular one at the moment is eLab Journal. We are currently investigating whether we can make that a standard for the whole UMC Utrecht. What we are also promoting is the idea of the word dry lab journal. I think it's a term that was coined by Sander uh, or one of the data stewards of the division of Gerard. I can't remember, but a dry lab journal is a, a journal you keep while you are processing data. You're not in the lab itself, you're behind your desk. But document what you do with data. I know from talking to researchers myself that not a lot of them do that, but this is a, a, a way of working that we are trying to promote. Uh, also keeping code books of all your um, data sets. Code book is also a collection of descriptions of all the variables in a data set. The use of standard vocabularies, say um, SNOMED or ICD-10, all this helps in uh, making your data reusable uh, in the end. And reusability can be, can be within the Institute, say um, data that was left by a PhD student five, who left five years ago, but looks interesting. It could be a, a master student who was in your lab uh, last year. Um, uh, the more documentation there is, uh, the better the reusability is. So I think that is the, the crucial point of this slide. Document what you do with your data. If you do that, then other people will benefit and it really becomes reusable at some future point in time. Um, I think we should stop here. Um, if you have questions, you can contact me personally. Um, you can contact Marie-Louise. You can also send an email message to data management at umcutech.nl. And uh, if, but the, the main point is, if you have a question, uh, drop us uh, an email and uh, somebody will reply to it.